you have anything to say about Halloween? I do. Okay. With Halloween coming up, I was wondering if two witches watched two watches, which witch would watch which watch? Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid directions. I'm Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to everybody who forces on Patreon. Halloween's so awesome. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I thought about doing a video of um, Bollywood or Indian-inspired Halloween costumes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's a great idea. I mean, you could do, I mean, specifically just... Like, Who would you be? That's a great thing. Who would you be on Halloween if you could dress up as some what? Indian-inspired character? Well, if it's like something relevant to this year. Any year. Well... Any year. Like if it was relevant to this year. Um, Mohan Lalan Jailer, I love. <laughs> uh, but like, Magumbo or, um, yeah, I, you can even do uh, Ra, um, is it Raj or Rahul from DDLJ SRKs? There's so many iconic. There's so many iconic um, costumes. You know who I would want to be? Pooh. Mm. I'd want to be VJ Raz and Gungabai. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, today we got a SRK interview. Uh, oh, great. And this is uh, with... Uh, do, do, do. Rajiv Masan. Yeah, that's it. You you know him. Um, I can... Right now I'm visualizing him. So we'll see if I'm right. And he, this is just... Uh, I think 2017 was when this oh, great. came out. So, um, and he talks about family, his career, a bunch of different Be stuff. Be interesting because it was pre-COVID and it's also the, 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 the silent years, as it were, where he hasn't or he made anything. Or just come out with a couple flops. Right. Um, just at that point. Because that point. we... The first few years of our channel, we didn't have a new SRK release. And now we have three this year, hopefully. Yeah. Here we go. Shahrukh, 25 yep, years that's who I thought it was. successful career. Uh, you are, of course, also a very proud family man. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Wow. Uh, what a starter. To make a film which the world likes and my family also. So what do we have in that combination? Is that hard to strike? It, it's still not been struck in 25 years. <laughs> I'm still working towards that. Actually, the day I strike it, maybe I'll just say, okay, enough, I've done this, let's not take a chance with another one. But you want to make a perfect film uh, which your kids... So I, like, for example, I made a Ravan. Mm. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm not someone who's saying it because I can, but I made it for the kids. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like a science fiction film where... Raw you know, one. I thought you said Ravan. Mm. I did too. The world didn't like it too You much. said Raw so one. Like yeah. the balance is to be that, you know, to be able to... Which I want to see. Film, which everybody likes, uh, including the family, and uh, that's, that's the perfect film, and perfect happiness. You said your kids are, are, are very sparing with their praise. You know, I think the acceptance of the fact that I'm an actor mm. is so, uh, uh, been there for so long. It's a matter of fact. It's very matter of fact. Um, like, just before I came here, uh, I was babysitting a Brahmi's not well, and the two kids came and sat down. So I showed them the new song, Safar, and I said, is it looking nice? I said, it's good. Yeah, it's nice only. <laughs> like it. He said, no, but this is what you do now. So right. obviously it's nice only. Yeah, so, and yeah time passes. Okay, you're very critical also. They're neither critical. Right. Not uh, praising it it's too just much. Part of, it's just part of what, you, what, what the dad, dad does. does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So there is a time in every actor's life, usually at the point when one is just begun to scale great heights of success, where one wrestles with and is often repeatedly asked, uh, how does one balance the work life with family? Do you feel like with time you've conquered that? Because it feels certainly on the outside like that's not something you still struggle with. I think only the essence, if I could call it struggle, it was the first two years of marriage. Okay. Mm. You know, because, but then <clears throat> the good part was, see, Gauri was new to the film industry, mm. but so was I. Right. It's not that I married an outside girl into the film industry. Mm. Um, mm. And so two years for us was in Mumbai, like, um, how do I say it? Um, uh, a honeymoon full of bumps. Sure. You know, mm. there were issues. Uh, like, you know, you don't know, uh, oh, you're going to shoot till 6 in the morning. Mm. Um, I remember the first night we were married and came to Mumbai after about 5-7 days. Um, she spent that evening nearly with her... Is that a fly on SRK's hair? Yeah. 
yeah. and everything done and she just changed the uh, full dress, she wore an Indian dress. At Himaji's shoot in film city till 6 in the morning. You know, I left, I thought I'll pack up at 8. I think uh, one of the actors got late or some delay as it happens in shoot. Mm -hmm. so there were no mobile phones. So I just sent a uh, cab, <laughs> I didn't have a car. I said, please come over and, you know, sit here because I'm really sorry, this is going to take a little bit. So she sat, uh, uh, I think, the second night in Mumbai in a film city makeup room. And they were really dingy then. Yeah. Uh, you know, they were yeah. all damp and dingy. It was raining Bad outside. Toilets. Yeah, and, and we just sat there till six in the morning and came back. And I think that kind of uh, made her realize, as ugly as it may have made her, that, you know, this is the life. Yeah. And and we were both new here. I mean, she, she was what? Uh, I was 25, 26. She was 21. Mm. So it was extremely new for her. Yeah. And I think just those two years cooking uh, omelets for each other and making eggs. We used to live right here. Uh, next to this hotel and it just passed off. Post that, I, I think uh, I became such a success, uh, though none of us are very material, but I became such a success, it became a part of the family. Mm -hmm. So there's a wife, now there are three children, there's a sister and there's stardom. So they, all of mm -hmm. us are now, we all live together. Right. And, and we take stardom as much as we take uh, each other's uh, success and failure with, with a lot of love and care, but it's all acceptable now. So. Um, say in, in a uh, six family uh, group we have the seventh one which kind of is bigger than the other six right. and we kind of just accept it and move on don't really uh, pay too much attention, pay attention to the startup part. So you made an appeal to photographers recently to be a little gentle if they must photograph your children. Um, you said don't hound them, you requested actually. I saw that video of your daughter uh, mm. trying to go for a movie and the photographer is literally mobbing her. Good grief. It's really disturbing. Um, and it's true, star kids today, whether they're your children, whether they're Mr. Bachchan's granddaughter, whether it's Sri Devi's kids, whether it's Saif Ali Khan's kids, they've all been at the receiving end of this intense media spotlight. Um, there used to be a time where you had to earn your celebrity. Today it feels like if you're the child of a popular movie star, it, your fair game for photographers, for the paparazzi, for the media. Uh, Shweta Bachchan actually wrote a column recently uh, requesting the media not to stalk uh, her daughter and, and her daughter's friends' social media, not to upload pictures, private pictures onto, uh, in, in, in the media. Does this disturb you as a parent? Uh, you, you, like I said, you know, the part of stardom that we all have accepted, this is part of the stardom. Uh, so one part was when they were growing up. It's an unfortunate uh, part. And we would do it with all the children. Uh, not the scrutiny only. I, I think everybody in today's time and age is fair game. It's not just the celebrity kids. Mm -hmm. I, I keep saying this, um, you know, we've sold our soul for selfies. And yeah. that's it. It's just a picture, you know. Many times I'm in trouble and uh, my team tells me, you know, you can't do this, you can't do this. You know, that person will die. They say nothing. It's just a selfie. Uh, go take a selfie and all be done. So, <laughs> and I'm not being, uh, I'm not showing off. Yeah. That's what life has become. Um, I, I think uh, initially, not the scrutiny part of it, but I think the kids started feeling awkward mm. uh, with all the, you know, paraphernalia, the cars and... Uh, every time I go out in a public place, I don't take them with me. Mm. Uh, my wife doesn't come, my children don't come. Uh, I go to functions alone or I go post, they have gone. Uh, so they don't enter with me. Mm. Because uh, with all due respect, I'm a star. I expect everybody to rush on to me. Uh, I don't expect that to happen to my family. So yeah. they've understood it. They don't go. And they tell me, what time are you coming uh, for dinner? Uh, when I, what, what time are you coming to the red carpet? Mm. So I'll be there by 11. Okay, so we'll go at 10. Or we come at 12. It's, it's, it's understood. Yeah. There's no, uh, there's hardly a place, you know, there might be a special occasion, occasion when some friends says you all have to come together right. when that happens. Otherwise, we never travel together mm -hmm. to a private dinner also. Uh, you know, they go separately, I go separately. Uh, some adjustments have to be made. Uh, one of them was that I did send them abroad to study. Mm -hmm. Not because of the scrutiny, but because they were feeling a little awkward, mm -hmm. you know, with all the attention they have uh, from their own stuff. You know, it's not regular yeah. to go to a party with, you know, there's a Bouncers, teenagers yeah. don't like it. They don't like parents calling them, you know, right. how they don't like this. So they left and uh, I'm happy they've gone. Mm. And, uh, also, it's it's where they're studying. To a large extent, uh, less people know me, though it is in some of the schools. <laughs> it's it's yeah. awkward. Yeah. So I don't like, Baba, 
you know, everybody on my floor knows you. So it was like, I'm, 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 I'm so sorry. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> there must be somewhere here in the States. He said, we have such oh, his, his three kid of did go to UCLA. You know, okay. Yeah. Whatever the LA, you know, one I, LA I school. To, uh, uh, stop the Germans. His, <laughs> his son. But he, I don't know if he still I, I lives here, though. I'm okay with them being photographed, like the other night we went out somewhere. And I took my daughter as a date. Yeah. I yeah. wanted to actually on Amiji's Diwali, uh -huh. but I missed out on it because there was so much press. Mm -hmm. I could not manage to get the cast together. But, you know, she was going out. She's a young lady. She's 16, 17. So she's all dressed up and I'm a date. They can't uh, be anybody else. Uh, so my request is, I understand. Uh, I understand we are part of media. I understand photographs to be taken. I've explained it to my kids also. Uh, my son kind of understands it. But listen, if photographers come, stand, mm -hmm. do the picture and say it. They listen, please, can I go now? And they'll all listen to you. I've known them for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And I made that request that night only for that. They listen, you know me. Most of them know me. I'm, you know, we've grown up all together. So take your picture. But post that, just let her go. Because, uh, you know, they're with friends. There's awkwardness. There's weird. Like, even at, at Tube Light, she didn't mm -hmm. come with me. Mm -hmm. She told me, I'm going on my own. I requested her that, you know, come with me. I'm going there. I'm yeah. going to wish Salman. And I'll pick you up. And then she had to actually call me. Can you pick me up? <laughs> I'm stuck. So, the, the, I... I yeah, the second part of it is uh, perhaps uh, uh, I, I'm old fashioned like that. I really do believe you deserve uh, attention. Mm. Uh, you have to earn it. Yeah. You have to do something for it. So, this I explained to my kids. I think my kids also understand it that just because you're photographed does not make you important at all. Mm. They know it. They know it very clearly. Do you worry that it might, this paparazzi culture might mess with their heads? No, my kids. I don't think so. I, I think uh, uh, the, the, the way they've been brought up... Uh, Helps to have a dad like SRK really to teach friends. you how to handle that. So they've the, grown up with uh, their yeah, they, they, life, No one not, better than him to teach them how to handle that. With the papa, <laughs> and, papa, don't, don't lose your temper. So there'll be too many people. Last time, Papa, you didn't... The other day I was leaving and somebody was... I said, one second, I'll do the picture too much. So my son took me to the side. He said, please go and do the picture. You're not supposed to behave like this. So I think they're quite mature about that. See, if you're born amidst um, yeah. a culture yeah. where you thought all the uncles and aunties who came to the house mm. worked on television, you know, whether it was Karan, whether it was Dugu, whether it's Shweta, whether it's Abhishek, whether it's Amiji, whenever they meet. So everybody's on television. So, they, you know, they kind of understood the game. Right. And they keep joking with Abraham. Papa, do you, want, uh, do you think he understands? So the other day, Aryan and Swana sat him down and said, uh, Abraham goes and waves to him. He loves to. Yeah, yeah. He loves to. It's not that I bring him up. He comes out and waves. So, Papa, bacha logs have come. So, he comes and waves. Uh, so, the other day, Aryan asked him that, uh, so, uh, Abraham, do you know why people come to wave uh, Papa? So, he kept quiet. He says, you know what Papa does? So, he says, shooting. So, he says, you know what Papa is? He says, uh, he's an actor. So, he says, you know why people come to see him? So, he said, yes. He said, why? So because he's handsome. <laughs> <laughs> not not I true. Think, I think probably he knows that you're a movie star. I think we get it. Either look, he knows the right thing. That's right. That's all you need to know. Right? <laughs> of several self-made millionaires and billionaires, Ted Turner, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Jackie Chan, have said that their children will not inherit their wealth. They've said that they will provide the best education that they can for their children. Um, but from that point on, their children have to earn an income just like the rest of the population. Some have said that inherited money is a curse. You know, the excellent comedian Louis C.K. has said, there's no way that somebody who's raised rich is not going to be a piece of shit human being. <laughs> as a parent, as a self-made millionaire, do you wrestle with these decisions? Uh, very early on, uh, like I said, you know, me and Gauri and my sister, we are very low middle class people here. So our wants, desires are not so many. Um, having said that, uh, we are also of the belief that, look, if you have the money, spend it right. on having a good life. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like saving for a rainy day. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, you, can't, you yeah. can't do that. As a matter of fact, uh, about four, when I was making Ravan, uh, when I asked Gauri that, listen, this movie might, I may lose a lot of money. And I gave her a figure that I might lose. And she said, you should. You should, please. Uh, you deserve to do it. You know, you made so much money. Please go and make films. Mm -hmm. And from that day onwards, I'm, I'm being very honest. Uh, uh, after a certain degree of safety that one provides for your family, yeah. I've never saved any money. It all goes into filmmaking. It's it just plan. goes into making an office, the VFX. I finance it myself and I'm very proud to do it. And those are not uh, really earning businesses as yet. They're just yeah. about break even. Uh, hmm. 
the only thing I'll add to everyone else uh, is that uh, because I did not have a house ever, ever, till I came to Mumbai, um, I will give my children amazing basic education, mm. which I think I have managed with Abram and Aryan and Sohana already. Mm. They're both doing, Aryan is at USC doing well, Sohana and Shala yes. will go into an acting big school. Mm. Like I always say, the minimum requirement to stay in a house is uh, graduate. You said that's the entry yeah, level. That's the entry level. And if you do better, you get better food. <laughs> <laughs> that. Uh, the only thing I'll add on to is I'll give them a house. Okay. It was a little difficult uh, mm. um, not having a house. I, I realized that especially when I got married, when I started working, there was no place. Generational wealth. So, Hope to be part of it someday. Uh, so whatever <laughs> that is, my ambition is only a great level education and a house. That's it. Nothing else. Uh, my, kid, my kids are very clear about that. They don't want anything else. They're like, listen, they don't travel the way star kids should. Uh, they don't... Uh, Apart from the fact that they look really stunning, <laughs> there's nothing about them which is stunning, really. I mean, they don't uh, have a car abroad, uh, they travel in taxis and trains and buses, and out of choice. Mm. And if I manage, if my management goes and helps them also, they'll say, just tell Baba, we don't need this. And so they live extremely basic, mm. but yeah, a rich basic, to be honest. <laughs> I that. We are well to do. But beyond that, I'm very clear, education and a house and that's it. The rest, they, we, we don't have money saved for a rainy day for them to live off. There's nothing like that. Okay. Jacques, let's talk about the new film. You've said repeatedly that you find love stories boring, especially to make. You find as a genre, it's your least favorite genre. So was it the idea then of working with Intias that led to Jab Harry Met Sejal? Uh, oh, do you just embrace the director's vision and inherit his passion? Absolutely, and I have no say in uh, love stories the least actually. You know, I've done some really classic love stories. Yeah. You know, all going to ESG, Adi, Karan, uh, and everybody who's made love stories mm. with me. It's uh, completely their baby. And I find it odd that they find me uh, still in that space. Right. You know, uh, Anand, the other day, uh, I was doing a scene and we were talking and he said, Sir, you have to learn this scene, you have to do this scene. So I said, but you tell me how to do it. He said, what do you mean? I remember Rohit saying the same thing. Yeah. There are different schools of people. And uh, who would, you know, there was a Thank you for the subs. scene with the Pika in Chennai. And um, so every time he had these guys, the Rohit has a very nice way. He's got actors uh -huh. uh, doing out the scenes. Oh, okay. There are eight characters, he's got eight actors, right. uh, theater actors. So he said, Sir, ye to koi aapko bhi nahi. So aap khud kar lo. And the other day I was shooting a song with Imtiaz, which uh, the love song. And uh, there were just two lines to be done. We had to patch it. And we're shooting against Green. And I did the two lines, and the song continued. So I kept singing. And he kept shooting. And till I remembered the lines, I kept shooting. And he kept sh sh uh, singing and he kept shooting. And they said, He said, I don't love you, sir. I love you when you love me. So I think it's a thing they feel for me. I don't know how it comes out, I'll be honest. Mm. But because the trust in me playing a love story, I just play along. I'm being honest about it. I don't think I'll ever be able to write a love story, direct a love story, participate in somebody having a discussion about a love story. And of course, having said that, I think Imtiaz has this really fine language of um, romance and love, which is quite, uh, uh, um, how, how do you say, it, it stems from a lot of uh, culture and stuff, mm -hmm. but it, it has its own free-flowingness to it. There is some edginess to it, some strange stuff to it. Mm. This one's a very sweet one, Jab Harry Met Sejal. So there's not, it's not too edgy and dark. Right. Uh, not at all edgy and dark. But <laughs> uh, somewhere, uh, you know, the earthiness mm. and the modern mix is extremely cool. You know, he used to come and narrate stories to me, Love Aajkal and all. And I would tell him, you know, you're, you you have this lover vibe of Adi and Karan and Yesji. What's mm. our language? Uh, and I really like that. So, when he came up with a story, apart from, even if it wasn't a love story, I would work with him, Tiaz. Because I, I think he's really a dignified man. And you've worked with some great directors. How does Intiaz compare? He's fantastic, yeah. You know, I, I see him, you know, the, the big problem, Rajiv, that happens sometimes is now. Because some of them have grown. The other day he told me that, uh, sir, you were shooting with Lokan Juhi. Ke shoot kar rahe so we were driving, we were cycling, he, was, he was cycling at night. <laughs> so I was coming back from recording, and it was raining, and we were just chatting. And I said, yeah, I was Yes Boss shoot. Ki thi. Said, I know, right? Main right. Tha, I would imagine that happens more and more now, right? Yeah, so, it's, it's, uh, so some of them hold back talking to me. Mm. Uh, but of course, most of them discuss the film, and I'm friendly enough for them to do it. But sometimes I'll see, see him sitting and chatting with Anushka about mm. a scene. And the things that he says, mm. um, uh, you just need to participate in that discussion.
to imbibe from him. So I think he's genuinely an extremely fine director of actors here. Extremely fine. I mean, of course, the technique and all is there. But as an actor, I think it's a, uh, it's, it's a treat to work with him. Jaruk, you were of course um, Anushka Sharma's first co-star in her debut film, Rabne uh, Banadi Jodi. She said that she was completely in awe of you at the time. Um, then of course, you're she lies. <laughs> I said this before. I'll say it again. Right at the beginning of the shoot, she came up to me and she said, "You can't act." Her <laughs> first film. Her first film, and I was really appreciated because she. I she love that part. Just like I do, she's fantastic with lines, and she was doing such a great job, and uh, so I was like really in love with her and the way she was talking and I was telling Adi fantastic and we want to make this one very fast mm. um, and <clears throat> somebody was, you know I really like you you're sitting doing some song I think somewhere so I really like you you're very nice her parents had come and met me and all brother so you were, uh, I've, I've never liked you as an actor <laughs> last shot I was giving with her uh, last shot on the motorcycle yeah. And she hugged me from the back and she said, you know, you know, I want to say something to you. So I thought that this picture is already finished. Now she must have realized right. the depth of my acting. <laughs> the subtlety of my acting. No, now she, <laughs> after months, she realized this is what acting is. So I turned and said, Ki, what, you, you think I'm a good actor? She said, no, you're really a good person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, substantiated what she felt right at the beginning and the end of the film. She was never in awe of me. How has that relationship changed? You all did. Uh, I love that about course. Anushka. Um, there was one dynamic in Jab Tak Hai Jaan, not romantically paired exactly. How has that dynamic changed? I mean, does she now think you're a better actor? She doesn't say it. <laughs> Have you noticed all the interviews lately? I was reading interviews when she was talking about a film, uh, Filori, and they've asked, how's it working? And she said, he's most comfortable to work with. He's really nice. He's great, talking, he's great talking with him. He has knowledge about everything. Not once has she said, you know, he can act. That's hilarious. I, I put Anushka in the category of uh, actors who would not say a line unless they believe in it. Mm. As a character or as a person. Mm -hmm. Can that be a pain sometimes? It can be. Because my my, my thing, is, uh, it's never been with Anushka. Mm. Uh, be maybe because of the fact that she started with me. Yeah. You know, so like like with Deepika and Anushka, I know for a fact that even if they disagree with me, right. there's a lot of gentleness how they put it across. Mm. And I'm smart enough to know it. Yeah. So it never reaches that level. But uh, I see, I'm a big believer that either you believe in the character so much mm. that you can say anything you want. Correct. Or you believe in your stardom or yourself so much mm. that listen, I'll say what I believe in. It can't be both. It can never be both. So either you're the character, you know, I understand an actor saying, my character won't say it. But doesn't he say it because you don't like it or the character doesn't say it? True. That's a big issue to me. True. Um, or someone like me who's like, you tell me what to say. I make the character say it. Right. To me, it's not like, uh, but sir, like, like for example, like even a small line in Jab Harry Met Sage, I would never say this to a girl, I'm cheap, cheap. Yeah. But it's not me. Somebody else, this guy called Harry. Correct. Make a difference. I'll say it. I believe it. I don't believe it, or whatever. So, uh, but Anushka is that one who would not say it if she doesn't believe it, either as a character or an actor, mm. depending on the day. Uh, but the dynamics haven't changed. I really trust her earnestness. Sure. So if she's saying something, even if it's disagreeable, to me it is. Yeah, this is coming out of earnestness. Right. right. This is not coming out of any other reason. Sure. It's not trying to be difficult. It's not trying. Mm. And I know that. And she knows that now. So she openly says, uh, I don't think I should do the show. So I know why she's saying, saying it. it. So I'll have a discussion with her and then uh, I'll tell him, I'll say, no, I'll say, no, I'll say, no, I'll say, no, I'll say, she must be right. We both must be wrong. Let's just go with her and go ahead and do that. I, I really respect her love, actually. So, Charuk, in this film, you play a tour guide and um, you've shot this film across Europe. Do you enjoy traveling? Is that one of Hated. your great, great... I was going to ask, is that one of your great passions or are you happiest at home? I'm happiest in a hotel room. My outdoor is about, if you ask me, you went to this... I won't remember the names mm. because I'm bad with names. But my introduction to most of the countries is by the hotel I've lived in. And the movies <laughs> they show there. And the He's lived a different life than most though. kind to me. They always give me the biggest presidential sure. suite. And they give me like... Yeah, because when he gets somewhere, he can't just go out and explore the city. No. So I take my... Traveling must I, suck. Uh, Imtiaz had to force me uh, very often because he loves traveling. Mm. Can't have a p yeah. unless it's a private yeah. plane. He's so it's like gonna I get bugged on a flight. Outside. So I never told him I would eat in my room, my little. Uh, thing yeah, can't go to the restaurants. And then I just go out with them everywhere. I'm I'm not a good traveler. I'm not. I, I don't get turned on by sights, nature. What well, do you get turned on by, Shahrukh? Because um, because you can't be a 
traveler who can enjoy himself because because you're constantly noticed or or no it's no i i i like the pleasure yeah. of uh, i like very small things in traveling mm. so they don't make you a traveler to me it is like uh, when i've been to italy i just like to sit in a cafe and have the coffee yeah. i just sit there i don't need to go and see the uh, you know the Sistine Chapel, or yeah, yeah. you know the, the Trevi Square, Fountain, or Trevi yeah, Fountain. Yeah. I, I don't need to. If I don't see it, I haven't missed it. I've been to it. Yeah. That's uh, like I've been. I, f- I did a film there. And, you know, <laughs> I don't need to go see that. <laughs> we shot a musical number over at that spot. Way, I don't need to go see it. <laughs> in a way, the senior most person on a set. Yeah. Uh, age-wise and uh, experience-wise. Experience, yeah. So everybody in the morning when they like, shout out, we all are going to this park. And I'm like, yeah, and, and when they say it, it means I have to go with them. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, you, <laughs> this is where I wanted to be and all. And I go there and I, I act that I'm really having a great time also. I, uh, uh, like, you know, there's a song, there's no place I'd rather be than holding yeah. you tenderly. Yeah. Mine is no place I'd rather be than just being in my bedroom tenderly <laughs> and not leaving my hotel room and sit there, be on my lap. Now everything is accessible. Uh, maybe go to a gym, come down, just down the, if, if there's a place like a cafe or a restaurant down, right. I enjoy, but I'm not much of a traveler. Does that make you unpopular with the family? I mean, the, the wife and kids must hate that, right? Uh, n- no, they actually kind of like it. Okay. I'm very good with toy stores. Okay. Uh, right. I'm very good with movie watching. Okay. Uh, I'm very good with uh, taking my girl shopping for girly clothes. Okay. And I'm very good with Universal Studio. Uh, Thor Parks. Uh, so now, like, if I go now, then I'm in the house. Mm. I'll uh, keep a pool table. I'll keep the video games. I have a lot of board games, mm. Trivial Pursuit and all. Mm. So I'm the guy who gives you the chance to play at home on a holiday. Right. And then if you want to go somewhere like a movie and all, twelve thirty in the night, I can go there. Right. But the rest of the stuff, like when they say we are going to that place, you know, it's a lovely restaurant and all. And also, anyway, most places they're not. They don't want me along. Yeah. So ours is an ideal family. You're more of a bother <laughs> there. I'm a bother. So I mean, I, we're an ideal family. I stay at home when they're out. And when they come back home, then I have fun because I really enjoy being at home. Yeah. Tarek, you've been shooting with Anand Rai uh, for a film in which, of course, you play a vertically challenged person or to use the now frowned upon word, a dwarf. What's been the biggest challenge in turning you into a vertically challenged person? Is it going to be all oh, the VFX. CGI and perspective? Or does the performance change because you have to play someone who's... You know, this film was written by Himanshu and mm-hmm. Anand. And they've written stuff. Uh, and it's a wild ride. Uh, it's very different to written. Very different to written. It's a very interesting film. More often than not, we shoot it normal. And then we uh, work around another five shots to make me uh, shorter. Uh, but what happens is that we are actually discovering new things with every shot we take. We've shot about 15, 20 days now. And, uh, you know, suddenly we are like doing a scene. And uh, th- there was a little bit I was doing. When I moved back, my feet are not shown in the scene. But we shoot everything. Right. Uh, and then kind of zoom in. That's uh, it's one of the techniques that mm. you have to use. You can't, mm. a close up is also wide. And then we have to zoom in with these 4K lenses and all. So that you have all the information and stuff. Mm. Uh, so I just moved away, sliding away, because I had to move away from a place. And I normally do that. And suddenly it became a thing. Because when I was made shorter, that looked so sweet. Right. You know, it just looked very nice. Mm. So this is like, you can see what you're doing. So there's a lot of discovery happening. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, there is a way they have thought of the uh, uh, graph. I play it like that. Mm. And uh, very often it is happening that you're like, uh, listen, I think it's important to do that. Because as soon as we, we, we've got the technology with the Rachelis VFX that we see, it there and then. Previous. We have no, no previous. Okay. What we shoot also. Okay. What we shoot in about four five minutes. Yeah, the dailies are on the day. Of course, it's enough, <laughs> but it's uh, you can see it. Mm. So we see it, and you're like, sir, वो करने की ज़रूरत नहीं है. Yeah, this is enough mm. because of the way it's turned out. Sometimes, uh, sir, वो कर ले अब. वो शायद I think the thing that we thought we don't need right. might look nice. A person of this stature doing it. Mm. So there is a lot of discovery, and as an actor, uh, there are a lot of things. Uh, that I'm, I've not seen the edit now, mm. but some of the scenes I've seen in the last 15 days, there's a lot of change over that I'll have to do. Uh, I mean, the physical changes, you're stepping down the steps, you don't step down, you jump, hop down. Right. So all those things, the way you walk, uh, you can't... Okay, for one, I can't put my hands out like this. <laughs> because it'll be too long, so I have to keep them like this. That's gone. <laughs> but uh, uh, there's a lot of things in this that uh, I've done. The only problem he would have. 
You've seen it. It's very working. confining for SRK. I'm very sure we may have to redo bits because that, that, that may not suit or look a little different once uh, uh, the character is made shorter. Right. So there is, there, is, there is a lot of things as an actor that's going to Did work. you watch other films just to see how it's done, to see what not to do, to see what to do? Were there references? See, of course, uh, Apuraj I've been yeah. seen. That's the defining film in India. Yeah. Uh, before that, strangely, years ago, I'd seen a film, if I'm pronouncing it right, the famous painter Thulo Lothre, T-O-L-O-U-S-L-A-U-T-R-E-C. He, he, he used to paint on... Uh, Amazing film you should see. Mm. I think it's a French film. Okay. Tula Lothre. Loth if I'm pronouncing it sure. right. Uh, he was part of that Woody Allen film, one of the characters. Okay. When he goes in the past, meets all the great writers and stuff. Moonlight in Paris. Yeah. Right. So, one of the characters. Okay. He's very famous. Very body. He used to go only paint girls in Lido kind of places right. and stuff. On, on napkins. Uh, I saw, for some technology, I saw it. But no. Apuraja was years ago. Mm. 15 years ago. I don't want any reference. Sure. Also, the character that we play uh, is not someone you need to empathize with or right. feel. The whole idea is, uh, Anand had one very straight line. Because he believes I'm a great lover. Yeah. So he believes that can I take away everything of Shah Rukhness, which he does in a romantic film, which was Imtiaz's thing also. Mm. So I don't want you to do anything that is Shah Rukh, so he's not written it in. Even the songs are done very differently. Correct. So let's take away everything that people assume mm. uh, are his mannerisms or his Shah Rukhness, And then can you be the greatest lover in the world? Right. So I think... Uh, it's interesting just challenges. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. And uh, you know, when, when, when you are taken away, I, I don't know whether I use them as crutches or not, or does it just flow. Sure. But it's nice that, you know, suddenly when I'm playing a particularly talented person, a lot of the stuff that I would like, you know, even, not just, I mean, if I, if, if I was uh, playing not a vertically challenged person, I'd look at a girl in a way, now I'm looking at her like this. Correct. You know, so it all just changes even uh, small little things to the big things, you know, that how do you hold a hand? Yeah. Uh, instead of hugging her, you're hugging her waist. Knees, yeah, whatever. <laughs> right. right. Um, Chuck, there's also been some very serious talk about reuniting with Sanjay Lila Bansali, uh, with whom, you, of course, you made one of your most popular films, Devdas. I don't think it's any secret that, um, that he, asked you to be in Bajira Vastani at one point and um, also mm -hmm. uh, Padmavati. Why hasn't that happened yet, is it? No, Bajira was long time right. back, yeah. yeah. Long time back, before uh, the cast was finalized. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, for a, I, I think he was planning to make it for a long time. Right. Uh, from yeah. time Many immemorial. Yeah. That's true, yeah. that's true. Yeah, it was Karina and Salman. Yeah. And in that phase, even I've entered. Uh, a part of it was, you know, I'm a little uh, wary of getting into historical personally, because uh, uh, it means I, I just have to do this. Uh, Ahsoka, even Devdas, was a space where I just realized I need to, if I do a historical, even Jodhar Bhavidashi Ghosh, when he was talking to me a long time back, I would say, you know, uh, Ash, the, if I have to get into this, I need to give up everything. Not that I need to be in uh, Akbar zone mm. or um, Bajira zone, but I just need to. This is it, you know, the costumes, the horse right. riding, it's, it's a different world. Mm. It is. It's one of the uh, one genre of filmmaking that I know for a fact I have to give up things, uh, not just another film, just be. Be in that, right. Just be. The others I can pull off, uh, you know, with a gap of one month, get on to see, I've finished Jab Harry Met Sejal a month later, I'm into this right. Alan's film. It's, this one I just want to finish off first, you know, and live with it for a little bit. Mm. One was that. The, the second part is Sanjay has this uh, really bad habit of coming to cast me in a film uh, three days before he's shooting. <laughs> so, let's do this. Then, uh, then he'll look at his team. I'm starting in three days. So, like, you want me in three days? No, no. Ten. So, no, ten, but I'm <laughs> shooting this. So, when did I grow the moustache? That we'll all figure out. First, you just decide that you can. I said, look, I'd love to do it. Even the last conversation we had before he went in for Padmavati shoot, I met him in my book. He'd come home, we were chatting. And I said, you please tell me now. Don't tell me the film also. I mean, my love for working with Bansari right. has been for so long that you don't tell me the film. Mm. You tell me the month. <laughs> and then 10 days before that uh, date, come and say in 10 days. Right. And I wouldn't have signed the film. So he, he, he did tell me he's got a few subjects, which we didn't come down to because I think he's been awfully busy with Padmavati. Mm. I think recently I sent him a message also. Batare, I'm going to sign it. So, so yeah, inshallah, we'll do some here. I, I, uh, he's got a couple of ideas. Uh, which have been there for with him for years, and if I could participate in any one of them, it would be fantastic. It's it's time I did a film with him. I think I'm uh, 
evolved enough now to be in a Bansali film. <laughs> Finally, Sharif, it's exactly 10 years since two very successful films of yours, Chakde India, uh, in which, of course, Shah Rukh Khan, the star, really disappeared into the role of Kabir Khan, the hockey coach. Uh, and then there was Om Shanti on the same year, a full-blown, no apologies entertainer, where to some extent, you were playing an exaggerated version of Shah Rukh Khan, the star. Um, it was a great year in terms of also showcasing the versatility, and it seems like that's been what this decade's been about, just the versatility, mixing it all up. What's the next 10 years going to be like? Action. What Action. would you like the next 10 years to be? What does he say? <laughs> you know, like like you said, I, I don't want to be getting into uh, 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 a set piece for myself. Like all my friends, my office, team, well-wishers, family, why don't you think of a film? The other day, I'm, some, some really well-meaning directors mm. who I've not worked with and were friends, and uh, I, I met him at a party and he said, Tu bata na yaar, kuch soch. I don't want to think. I think the only uh, way I can be versatile mm. is that you think it's it. coming from them, yeah. You think it and put me in it. Yeah. Uh, whether you believe I can do it or not, or can you push me to do it? Come and tell me, do this, and I'll do it. And that's how it happened. I could do an Om Shanti Om. I remember Ali telling me to Dadi Bhai. So I said, I was thinking, I'm going to go to I said, Dugale, I, in my life, I'd never grown up here. To them, yeah. He said, I'm going to go to the house. I said, I'm going to I have no issues like that. See, to me, it's not that I sit down. I've never been the one sit down on a character and say, look, you know. You tell me what you want me it to do. It has to come from... Yeah, yeah. Like, like Bansali told me, I have to go bored. Just tell me. I go, but not three days. <laughs> I, I have like a shampoo ad. <laughs> <laughs> But any direct, I would, uh, my whole idea now, I haven't, uh, I'm in talks with a lot of people, we sit sure. down, they're all friends. We've been chatting about films. Some of them have said, Tu bata, to main to koi bata nahi yeah. uh, But I think it, my whole versatile bit now, I, I think I'm in the best phase uh, as an actor star. Yeah. Uh, I know how to make a big commercial film. Mm. Uh, but unless you want to make it, I'm not making it. Sure. Uh, I, I, I think uh, with fan, somewhere, uh, that was challenging. Uh, it's important sometimes to be in a space where you'd rather not be. Hmm. Fan was like that. You know, you were listening to it, but you were saying, why are you doing this? I'm going to sit here, I'm going to love you, I'm going to love you, I'm going to love you, why are you doing this? And then I did that, it was very hectic, physically very, very tiring. Uh, I think emotionally also extremely draining to play these guys so real. Uh, but I had a great time doing it, but only if you want to do it. Right. So all my directors now, and uh, all the ones I've not worked with also, I think I've just told them, you tell me what you want me to be. Mm -hmm. Don't come with any set piece. Ki, aap karoge choti wali, karunga, aap karoge badi wali. I don't want to make a commercially successful film or an artistic film because I want to make it. I want to make it because you want to. Yeah. And I just want to go by your trust. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only way I'll have no idea how to do it. Right. So I'll go by your idea, which would be newer than me, who's done it for 25 years and 60 films. My ideas are done. You know, I can only now mix and match those ideas and create sure. something. But if you have something completely out of the box or inside the box, mm. I'm ready to do it and uh, play along. And that's what I've been doing, whether it was a Chennai, whether yeah. it was a fan, whether it's a race, whether it's Harry, whether it's Anand. Uh, it's genuinely just a mix and match. You want to do it? I do it. I want to work with a person I'm happy with. Sure. Him or her should be pleasant should be sweet. That's the only. They should be like my hotel room uh, when I travel. <laughs> as long warm as and cozy. They're warm and cozy. As long as they like my hotel room, I feel like I don't want to go anywhere but be with them. Uh, I think I I genuinely believe I, I live with my directors. I just want to be with them and tell them, Aap right. So I, and as an actor, I think uh, you have to be that giving mm. and that selfish. That listen, I'm only working with someone who loves me to death. That selfish. And I want to just do everything that you want to tell me. It's, it's like a love. It's, it's like a, you know, uh, like a love story. If, if you're not having a love story with your director, um, there's no point making a film at the age of 50 to 51. I, I don't believe there's a point making a film. What a lovely thought. Thank you for entertaining us, Sharuk. Here's looking forward to the next 10 years, but more importantly to the new film. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. The next 10 years is about to be his most successful <laughs> yeah <laughs> especially the the year 2020 uh, 2023 um a lot of interesting stuff he said there he always has such a unique perspective yes he's because so unique one because he's also he's a movie star he's a he's a movie star through and through and i honestly think he's a very underrated actor um not when you ask indians obviously but i think when like if you're talking about 
you know, the, like in terms of the people that you think are the best actors, um, I think he's underrated in his acting, but he is a, he is a movie star. And so like he has to think of certain things and he has to do certain things and the way he has to approach certain things. And um, it's always such a unique perspective because very few people have or anybody has his level of stardom, mm -hmm. especially outside of India. Yeah. Uh, there might be a few that in India that do like the other cons or other the superstar Rajnikanths of the world that all, all kind of have their own thing. But I always think he has such a unique perspective. Um, I think it's very interesting how he thinks he has to approach a Bansali film differently mm. in terms of a period film. Mm -hmm. He feels like he has to almost, I don't think he has to think he has to go method. I think he, he said that, but it feels like he's kind of like, I kind of have to do a little extra. Well, he can't, as he said, uh, uh, I, he can't rely on the things that he knows that he can just do second nature. Mm -hmm. it, it's far more requiring of him mm -hmm. to to do. And he he is, we've said this before in interviews, he reveals aspects of his approach to movie making and his approach to acting. I I would love for him to write a book because his approach to acting is unlike anybody else I've ever heard. Heard. But I also don't think it will work for anybody else. I don't think so. <laughs> Not at this stage in in the career. Yeah. Uh, it's the, it's just I've never heard anybody talk about acting in film the way he does. And the not just his approach, but his thoughts on why he does what he does and what he considers to be successful in terms of his um own personal gratification as well as his uh, just his approach it's there's i've never heard anybody with that it's very he's a unicorn in that regard to me as somebody the way that he talks about it's one of the reasons i would love to to talk to him even more in depth about process because so much of what he says is so unlike anything i've ever heard from anybody else and one of my favorite attributes about him and we've talked about how articulate and intelligent he is yeah if you watch this from beginning to end, he's like this in every stinking interview. Yeah. He is always present. Mm -hmm. He is in the moment. Trust me, his phone's going off. His team needs to talk to him. There's a thousand things he needs to do. And he is always grounded and sitting and looking you in the eye and giving you everything of his attention in that moment from moment to moment. And I bet he's that way with everything he does. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shock it's a, it's, a gr it's a really admirable attribute for someone of his his stature and responsibility. I think he should consider doing an OTT series. I think that'd be a fun, creative avenue for him. At the uh, very least, just because it's something he hasn't done. I think that would stimulate his... Haven't done. Uh, and uh, you don't have to worry about the box office of it, mm -hmm. um, whether he wants to or not. Obviously, I don't know, but I mean, just get with a director that, that I mean, Raj and DK uh, or, or, or many others. Uh, maybe that's an avenue where you can work with on your uh, uh, and, and let it be something that clearly I think he'd still do it, but don't make it a love story yeah. and allow him to just spread his wings and enjoy doing something he's not done before. I think that for him is the biggest thing is present him something he's never done before. And let that be something he is excited about because you're excited about. Yeah, because I get the whole box office thing in India. It's it's a it's a different beast. And he's somebody who obviously needs to care about box office because he's a filmmaker. We've always said that the people that should care about box office are the filmmakers. Because <laughs> yeah, because he's he has <laughs> money the, put the, into the his in it. films. And he's I not just that. acting in it. The people that I don't get are the ones that obsess about it that right. are, have no or measure of, the artistic value you know, of a film based on its box it office. Made. Right, it's ridiculous. Um, uh, Godard Two is now like one of the most successful things ever. No, I'm not, we haven't seen it, but it's like oh, best film ever, just because it made whatever. Like I said, I don't know anything about it. I haven't seen it. I'm not saying anything about the film's quality. No, I'm it's like the people that do that. It's as ridiculous as valuing the culinary expertise of a meal simply by the price tag on the check. Yeah. They're not related. Yeah, um, but uh, the fact that yeah, if he did an OTT series, wouldn't have to worry about any of that. One, it would be extremely successful because it's Shah Rukh Khan an OTT series. Yeah, um, but uh, I think that'd be wonderful. And it's also super interesting um, in the beginning when he was talking about his kids and the paparazzi because it's such a unique experience. I don't know if you heard like what uh, Justin Bieber said just recently. Mm. He was 
you know, he's followed everywhere and, and all that kind of stuff. And people are like, Justin, Justin, hey, how you doing, man? And then he just turned. He's like, hey, look, I get you guys to have a job, but can you just, like, not talk? Like, just take your picture and... I didn't see leave, that. Leave me alone. Yeah, I didn't like, see that. I Like, I'm. we're not going to have a conversation. Right. Like, just, I, you have a job, click your picture, and then move on. You don't have to say, hey, Justin, hey, Justin. <laughs> and I was like... Yeah. I 100% get that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, it's, I'm sure that they're at the, it's also super interesting that he doesn't go with his family <laughs> anywhere. I, he knows it's going to get hounded. It's going to take forever. Yeah. Um, and he'd much rather, uh, his family would much rather just sit And down. I bet he's really articulate with his kids and his wife, and they're all together and say, look, with, with the great blessings we have come a lot of other things that we have to sacrifice. And it's just the nature of what our life is. It is what our, what we've been handed mm -hmm. no one has everything they want and we need to be grateful for what we have and recognize what you know who butters our bread and there's lines we can draw but he's he's clearly made a really um easy to live with line because otherwise you'd, you'd stress yourself out mm -hmm. of yes my life is going to be under a microscope and this is what it is and this is how you live in that and like we said watching it what better teacher could they have yeah. Than that man to show them how to live in a world where you're a celebrity. But more than a celebrity. Yeah. You're basically a god. Yeah. I mean, they get more attention like, than most celebrities do simply because he's their dad. Yeah. It's also so sad, though. Like when you, she, she, she was at the elevator. That was terrible. Oh, That's the thing is when it becomes, it's one thing for them to take pictures, it's another thing for them to just hound and uh, stalk and press and hide in the bushes and spy and invade your privacy that's not okay yeah, it's, it's an that's an never it's okay. an unfortunate part of uh celebrity yeah that's that obviously okay. he understands I'm, I'm sure he doesn't like it no oh i'm sure i'm <laughs> but, sure you know he's i'm sure he's had the conversation at a very young age he's like this is our life um just try to deal with it as best you can sure and i'm sorry sure that's just you're also gonna have a bunch of privileges as well and i think he it's a it's a fine line because uh, I like the fact that he understands his privilege and he probably has talked to his kids about the yeah, privilege, yeah, um, and the privilege that they get um, of of being, you know, kids and, of a celebrity. And I I gotta say another attribute of his is that I don't think you will find someone of this level of international superstardom for decade on decade on decade on decade. Mm -hmm. Who's as grounded and down to earth and humble? Yeah. Oh no, I don't think so. Um, and isn't full of himself. You also, uh, I love what <laughs> Anush. I would love to talk to her about that. The fact that she's like, I've never liked you as an actor. <laughs> well, I just love her as a he, person. And when actor. he talked about her process and that she will not say something that she as the character doesn't believe, yeah. it seems to me that her truth barometer is in freaking concrete. Well, he's always, she's a great So actress. she's not going to lie to him if she doesn't think he's a good actor. Uh, it's no surprise from what we know about her as a producer, yeah. as a person, as an actress. I think she's just got to, um, I cannot tell a lie. And she's always come across <laughs> incredibly ballsy. Yes. And so I'm sure Very she's much the so. exact same way in person. It's just absolutely hilarious that yeah, she tells yeah, yeah. Show her, he's such a nice man. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, anyways, great interview as always. Um, let us know what other Shabrakan interviews we should react to. What should be the next Shabrakan besides Jaw One? Which and if and if if you know I him, if that, I, we'd love to talk to him. I wonder if uh, Jaw One will do well at the box office. I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's such a mystery. Uh, anyways, <laughs> let us know down below. Josh!